Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Today I'm in Scotland. Today I'm at Glendronach Portwood. But Jason, many people have done videos about the Portwood. Well, many people have done the video about the 10-year-old Portwood. This is the new 2020 release and this is a no-age statement. So ta-da! I'm the first person doing a video about this, at least in the English language I can find out about. So, um, this is 46%. Um, this is whiskey base number 164944. And I bought this bottle here in Germany for 56 euros and 90 cents. No age statement um, means um, it used to be 10 years old. It used to say that it was actually a three year old period where it was in the port casks. And today they just left that off. So, um, if you look at the bottle code here, I'm not sure if you can see it or not. I'm not good at this. So, let's see here. There's a bottle code and you can almost read it. It's um, 2020 slash 06 slash 18. So, this was actually bottled on the 18th of June, 2020. So, um, now I have a comparison whiskey, as you probably expect. And it's going to be a Glen Alachy. A Glen Alachy 11-year-old port wood with 46%. Now I have to pay um, five euros more for this. So this is the more expensive of the two. This is 61.90, at least in my part of the um, of the universe that I live in. And this is whiskey base number 152144. So you can actually see on the numbers there the development, um, how quickly um, 10,000 different bottles have been now added to that whiskey base. So um, both of these are port pipes. Are they a port pipe? Um, port wood finish. I'm so sorry. It says here, this gorgeous ruby red malt has been matured for over nine years in American oak barrels. The additional, yeah, here we go, maturation of vintage ruby port wood pipes um, develops a flavor, depth, and complexity and creates a vibrant color. Now, the first thing that I really want to talk about is the color. I notice no difference. For me, they look exactly the same. They actually do. <laughs> so, 46%, 46%, no age statement. It used to be 10, now it's probably less. This is 11. So, this used to be three years in the, in the port pipes. Here we have the, what did I just read? This is the, um, the nine years, so they have two years in the port pipes. Um, a port pipe, if you have a normal um, American um, bourbon barrel, you know how it looks. You go to butt, it's actually 500 liters bigger. And then you go to the port pipes, and the, the ends of the port pipes are smaller, and it has more of a, a very, very bulging moment, and they were easier to actually transport. That's why it's a pipe, a port pipe, instead of a butt or a um, barrel or a barrique. Barrique is what we use in the wine world more. All right, on the nose... I get a very, very interesting raspberry moment um, with a little bit of a sweet wood additive, additive or a sweet wood um, addition. Over here, the Glen Allergy. One second. I smell myself to get my, my nose neutralized here. I have more of a strawberry with a darker chocolate wood moment. Um, very, very interesting. So, um, question of the day. What other um, bottlings do you know that have great port um, finishings? We have from here Tomatin, 14 year old, that's port. And we have from Ireland a few. Um, but what would be your favorite port? I just recently did a Bunhabin port um, limited release. That was very interesting. Expensive compared to this. Um, you get one of these bottles for about. Uh, you, three of these bottles were one of the Bunahabin, um, and it was also only 11 years old, but it was cast strength. Um, yeah, so let's try this. Slanche to your health. What is really... Surprising, that's the word I'm going to look for, is the youth of this whiskey. That, that prickle, it, it tickles my tongue. There's a whole lot of young malt in here. It's missing a lot of that smooth, silky, 
um, well-rounded maltiness that you get when you have a little bit of an older whiskey. I have the f a feeling that ever since um, Brown Foreman took over here, um, Glenn Dronach, and especially with the, the eight-year-old um, that they had, and also with this now that they're really pushing, they're a little hurried. Like, hey, get that stuff out of the out of the um, out of the warehouse into the bottles as quick as possible. Now we know that Brown Foreman is actually a family-owned company, but we also know that it's actually on the stock market. Um, the family owns the majority stake of the company, but the rest of the um, company is then um, on the free stock market, and so they're always looking for quarterly profit reports. And after spending all that money buying Glendronach, um, Ben Riach, and Glen Grassel, they want to see some profits coming in. And so here, instead of a 10-year-old, we have a no-age statement. Okay, enough time talking. I think I have enough time to have my palette reset. Going over here to Glen Archie. All right, all right. Oh, I have one more story to tell you. Um, I did a, with a couple other, I was 23 people that we did this online with. Um, I had six different 15-year-old uh, sherry matured 46%, um, as I said, 15-year-old Scotch single malt whiskeys. Uh, Tamdu lost. It was the worst. And then it was the battle for the best between blind, between the Glen Arachy. Um, later on, I found out with the Glen Arachy, it was more of a chocolate note. And then the Glendronach 15, which was more of a berry, sweet, nice, raisiny uh, moment. And um, they really bothered that out. They were different, but yet they were equals. And I really, really think that Glen Arachy has the potential not just to be an equal with Glendronach, but Billy Walker and his um, team, it's just not him, it's his team, they have the possibility to surpass Glendronach. Now, Billy Walker has a problem that they, he bought the distillery not even four years ago, and so only that point is when they could start actually finishing things. So it's going to take a while before they actually have a, <coughs> a fully matured product of 12 years in a sherry, in a port, in a whatever barrel. All right, one second. And so I think this comparison with the Glen Archie is a fairly good comparison, actually. Mm -hmm. This whiskey is rounder, silkier, but, and this is my problem with this whiskey, there's a lot more of a tannin, there's a lot more of a wood moment. There's almost a little tiny little bit of a bitterness in there. This has a chocolate, strawberry, but with a very, very dark chocolate, like 70, 80% cacao um, over that strawberry. Um, I'm not a great fan of that. So the question is, am I going to have something that's too young or something that's a little bit over wooded, a little bit too woody? And to be very, very honest, I'm going to go actually for the too young. Um, I've tried this whiskey and if you water it down to like 40%, it actually gets very, very nice. Now, why did they not pr um, present it at 40%? I would have, but hey, then you had to have chill filtration because when you travel in the winter, um, everything gets really cloudy, and if you have a dumb American or a dumb person has a tumbler, puts an ice cube in it, pours the whiskey over it, also gets cloudy. We don't want that. And so they said, hey, let's have our natural color, non-chilled filtration, 46%, bam. Even though that might not be for me, for Whiskey Jason here, the optimum, the prime, the perfect sweet spot for that whiskey. Other people might not be so sensitive to the youth of this whiskey, and therefore they might actually go, oh, this stuff is great. It's good, but not great. This is also good. So if I'm going to give my grades, this is going to be a C++. And this is a C on a good day, a C+. Value for money, this is also a C. Buy it if you can, um, if you want to. A, why haven't you bought it? B, buy it. C, you can buy it if you want. D, you don't need to buy it. F, why was it even made? And so this is also value for money, a C. I personally like the color combination here, that dark red purple is a little bit better than this red kind of like stop, warning, danger. Um, I never really liked that um, red grape color over here. This dark red grape color, mm, uh, very, very delicious, very luscious. All right. Mm -hmm. And as I said, if I add some water, 
um, that 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 um, alcohol the alcoholism <laughs> the alcoholic notes here actually can be reduced. I cannot reduce the woodiness here. So a little bit of adding water turns into a much better whiskey. My question of the day, as I said before, what are the port cask finishes out there that you know of? You can actually uh, mention anything that's been a full maturation port. Mm -hmm. um, Irish Liberator mm -hmm. wasn't my cup of tea. There's a couple things. Bunahabin, um, the, the um, limited release with port was also very nice, but very, very expensive. So what can you recommend? I guess I'm going to be recommending the Glendoradach with the little... Um, Add, add, uh, adding of the water for my recommendations. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for hitting that bell to be notified when new things go online here. And thank you very much for supporting me. If you'd like, please share this video with other people on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Hashtag Whiskey Jason, one word. Whiskey spelled with, uh, without an E as it should be, as it's, um, <laughs> as it's done in the legal documents of the United States in the and all the contracts and all the different uh, legal definitions is always without the E, by the way, about guys and girls. All right, thank you very much for watching. Have all the best, have all the fun, and enjoy some good Glen Dronach or some good Glen Arachi in the future soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.